On the March 1st, 2021 episode of Monday Night Raw, Bobby Lashley faced The Miz for the WWE Championship. Although The Miz attempted to escape and manipulate the situation to his conniving advantage, the almighty Lashley was impatient and eventually got his hands on the now not-so-awesome A-lister. He absolutely destroyed The Miz and locked in his devastating, muscling-down, hurt-lock submission hold. The Miz had no choice but to submit, and Bobby Lashley was declared the winner, capturing the WWE Championship for the first time in his career. It was a monumental moment in Lashley's long, enduring pro wrestling career, solidifying his position as one of the top superstars in WWE. His alignment with MVP and the Hurt Business faction was one of the main reasons for his success. He had a dominant title reign and feuded with wrestlers like Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman, and Goldberg before losing the title for the first time to Big E. After this, Lashley didn't achieve the same level of success. Also, WWE broke up that Hurt Business faction that was built around him for apparently no clear reason, which negatively impacted his momentum. Now in 2024, it seems like he could be on his way out of WWE, at least by the last time we checked when we recorded this. Whether he will re-sign or pursue other opportunities in the world of combat sports and pro wrestling is unclear, but he still has much to offer to the world of professional wrestling and WWE. Stand back. There there's a new wrestling quiz coming through. Check out Brain Buster, the daily quiz that tests your WWE knowledge with winning streaks, stats, and more. It's time to see if you're up for the challenge. Let's get into it. The rise and dominating power that is Bobby Lashley. This is Sports Key to Wrestling. I'm Kevin Kellum. What is your take on Bobby Lashley? Let us know in the comments below. Lashley was born into a United States military family and competed in collegiate mat wrestling, winning national titles. He was pursuing the biggest stage for any legitimate wrestling competitor, the Olympics. In 03, he was training to potentially represent the United States in the 2004 Summer Games. But he witnessed an armed bank robbery where evading the armed assailants, he unfortunately injured his knee and that would basically take out his Olympic dream. After healing from the knee surgery, WWE great Gerald Briscoe came calling for the formidable grappler to take on the show business side of pro wrestling. Lashley made his debut with the WWE developmental territory Ohio Valley Wrestling as Blaster Lashley in January 2005. Quickly, he made it to the main roster of WWE. Brock Lesnar may have left the WWE around this time, but the company found someone within the same mold, a collegiate wrestler who had a standout look in Lashley. Lashley looked like the perfect guy to be maybe that next Lesnar. Both of them had similar backgrounds. Lesnar was a collegiate wrestling champion, as well as Lashley, who was a three-time NAIA national champion. Upon arriving on the main roster, Lashley quickly established himself as a dominant head-turning force with his impressive impressive physique and amateur wrestling background. His powerful in-ring performances and just natural charisma on camera made him a standout right away. One of his first big moments came at the Royal Rumble in 2006. Upon entering, Lashley immediately showcased his strength and agility. He quickly overpowered several competitors, eliminating Sylvan and quickly making his presence felt in the big multi-man match. During this same match, Lashley faced off with several established WWE names, including other fellow big men like Kane and The Big Show. These confrontations allowed him to display his ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the biggest big men in the business, and he felt like a superstar immediately, on par with people very quickly and WWE knew they had something special. His performance in the Rumble elevated his status within WWE. At WrestleMania 22, the showcase of the mortals, he competed in the Money in the Bank ladder match in Chicago. He was one of the favorites to win, but it was Rob Van Dam's night to take the briefcase down from the ladder. Despite the loss, Lashley maintained the momentum as WWE kept him strong, advancing him to the final round of the King of the Ring tournament. He then went on to win the United States Championship from JBL, but lost it to Finley just two months later. This was done because bigger and better things were in store 
for Lashley. In November of 2006, Lashley moved to the rebooted ECW brand under the WWE banner and went on to win the ECW championship in the Extreme Elimination Chamber match at the December to Dismember pay-per-view. Yeah, now overall, a lot of people don't fondly remember that match, but it was certainly a big breakthrough moment for Bobby Lashley in retrospect in his story. Although it was a controversial event, Lashley benefited a lot from this big win. He successfully defended his title against the likes of Big Show, Rob Van Dam, Test, Hardcore Holly, Kenny Dykstra, and Mr. Kennedy. Then he became the first person to break Chris Masters' master lock. WWE was giving him these special moments, a lot of TV time to tell the fans that he was going to be the next big star, and he was going to be a part of one of the biggest and most lucrative angles that WWE would do around this time. In 2007, future U.S. President, yes, we're serious, Donald Trump selected Bobby Lashley to represent him in the Battle of the Billionaires against another billionaire, Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon, who chose Umaga. The weeks leading up to WrestleMania 23 were filled with intense promos and hypes and just all out outlandish things to get people excited about this big celebrity driven match. Both McMahon and Trump engaged in verbal battles with Lashley and Umaga playing supporting roles. At WrestleMania 23 though, the bell had to ring and it was about Lashley and Umaga facing off in a hard fought match where Stone Cold Steve Austin was the special guest referee. Both wrestlers displayed their overwhelming strength in numerous high-impact moods and intense moments. As expected, the match saw interference. McMahon and Trump's involvement at ringside, of course, escalated things, and Austin's unpredictable nature added to it. It was a pure spectacle. Lashley defeated Umaga with a powerful spear. And of course, what was online in the match? Well, the losing billionaire got their head shaved. Yeah, Lashley was involved in one of the craziest moments in WWE where McMahon was forced to have his head shaved, bald in the middle of the ring with the Battle of the Billionaires brought a significant mainstream level of attention to WWE around this time when some people feel they weren't a part of that and many people credit, you know, Donnie Trump for all of it. But still, Lashley was a key part of the most talked about thing at that year's WrestleMania and he had been on the main roster of WWE for less than a few years. The match drew considerable media coverage and Lashley came out as a highlight. This elevated his status within WWE and solidified his reputation as a top tier talent and key player in major storylines. The magic of mania kept going for Bobby Lashley and he started feuding with Mr. McMahon. Yeah, they even screwed him out of the ECW championship with Mr. McMahon winning it himself. Yeah, the boss wants to work with you. It's not a bad thing. You're doing pretty good. He won the title back from McMahon in a street fight and became the first man to win the ECW title in WWE twice. Yeah, twice. However, not too long after this, he was drafted to Monday Night Raw. Therefore, he was stripped of the ECW championship and it was time for him to move on to the next level. Lashley was getting huge reactions from fans and it felt like WWE was ready to pull the trigger with him. He became the number one contender for WWE's championship, which was held by the most over man in the business, John Cena. But unfortunately, he would lose in that Great American Bash main event match. It faced strong reviews, four stars in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. And if you wrestled Cena around this time, you had to be a villain. But Lashley remained a big, bold, muscle-bound babyface who got to test C-Nation and get respect and admiration along the way. Following this, he was taken off television and injured at the hands of Mr. Kennedy so he could heal from a legitimate injury he reportedly suffered during that big match with Cena. He was one of the biggest baby faces in WWE at the time and fans were clamoring to see him return in a big way, but it simply wasn't going to happen. He was taken off TV for several months and then surprisingly in February of 2008, it was announced that he was released from his contract. This shocked everyone in wrestling. No one expected him to leave. WWE was so much hype behind him and so much surging popularity. He was on the verge of superstardom and now he was suddenly gone. So what happened? A bad fallout? There were reports that Lashley was frustrated with his creative direction in WWE. He was also unhappy with how the company had fired his then girlfriend, Crystal Marshall. But that's also been debated. 
So what was the next move for Bobby Lashley, who was truly a big, big name in WWE? He began his MMA career in 2008, a sport that was blowing up around this time. He debuted with a victory against Joshua Franklin. He signed with the Strike Force promotion in 2009 and won his debut fight there against Wes Sims. He then joined and leveled up to Bellator MMA in 2014, where he enjoyed significant success, going on an impressive winning streak, defeating notable opponents like Carl Atherton and Josh Appelt. Over his MMA MMA career, Lashley showcased his versatility with his size and an overall record of 15 wins and two losses. Lashley was able to utilize his legitimate combat sports skills, a 78 inch reach, and truly test a lot of opponents. But Lashley is a lover of all things combat. He maintained his presence in pro wrestling with various independent promotions, including in Japan and on a massive platform with TNA Wrestling, where he aligned himself with MVP and Kenny King, forming the powerful faction known as the Beatdown Clan, which became a highlight of TNA around this time, adding a new layer to Lashley's character. We would come back to him in MVP in a little while. Lashley won the TNA World Championship and feuded with many big time names there, including Drew Galloway, you now know as Drew McIntyre. They would have several big matches, including a tap out or knockout main event for Slammiversary's pay-per-view in 2016. Lashley maintained his presence as a true cross crossover superstar between pro wrestling and MMA, staying in promotions like AAA in Mexico, smaller independent promotions across the United States, Europe, and Japan, and his appearances helped draw significant eyeballs to every promotion he would hit. Finally, in 2018, 10 years after he left WWE, he decided to come back to the company. Lashley made a massive return in as big a way as you could. Timing in showbiz is everything, and he got the time when he interrupted the guitar strumming heel Elias in a concert on the night after WrestleMania, with absolutely no one in the wrestling world seeing it coming. Two chants of welcome back, welcome back, no words were needed. Lashley wrecked Elias with an impressive delayed vertical suplex where he basically posed while slamming a full grown man. Lashley was pushed as a top tier superstar from the get go. He even got to beat Roman Reigns in a singles match at Extreme Rules clean down the middle. However, he would not maintain all of the babyface good guy stuff and would lose an opportunity a few weeks later against Reigns to elevate to the Universal Championship. Following this, Lashley won the Intercontinental title and took on a new more heelish persona with Leo Rush at his side. This turned out pretty well, pretty well. Yeah, he got to do those posing segments, you know, where Leo Rush hyped up Lashley's favorite pose. It was hilarious. It would also play into the Shield's final feud in WWE, having a very entertaining main event at Fastlane 2019 before a fun little program with Braun Strowman, which saw him have a meaty, chaotic last man standing match. While some aspects were positive, there were also some negatives. He got entangled in a feud with Sami Zayn, where Zayn introduced Lashley's three sisters. The segment featured three male wrestlers cross-dressing as women and pretending they were Lashley's sisters. It was supposed to be funny, but it it was just sad. It, it, it wasn't good. And then there was the infamous Lashley-Lana-Rusev love triangle. The storyline revolved around Lana, yes, the ravishing Russian, who was married to Rusev and cheated on him with Bobby Lashley. This angle included several provocative and sensational segments that pushed the limits of TVPG, with Lana kissing Lashley in front of Rusev, leading to a public humiliation of Rusev. Week by week, the segments became more and more controversial as Lana and Lashley continued their on-screen romance and were featured in risque segments intended for shock value. Instead of being presented as a dominant, serious, powerful athlete, Lashley was involved in soap opera storylines that leaned too much into the sports entertainment side of things, which didn't exactly align with his previous persona as a legitimate tough man. After Rusev got released from WWE, the storyline was cancelled, and soon Lana and Lashley parted ways. 
This is when the good days of Lashley's career started under some very odd circumstances. The pandemic had just begun around this time. MVP had recently made his way back to the company and a partnership was created between him and Lashley. MVP's promo skills complemented Lashley's imposing premise, making them a formidable duo together. Now he was seen as a dominant, no-nonsense powerhouse. This transformation was key in changing the perception of Lashley as a mid-card reliable performer back into a main event star. He was also winning championships, including the US title, and went on to have a dominant run with it. Soon, MVP also started managing the talents of Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. Along with Lashley, they would form The Hurt Business. Yes, they also revived the careers of multiple superstars, giving them renewed purpose in the company and a collective effort. It provided a platform for all the members to shine and showcase their talents. And they were doing this during a very tough time for WWE. Yeah, through all the Thunderdome stuff and beyond. Fans now were ready to see Lashley be on top once more, and he was already proving himself as the mantle of a performer who could truly display power at that level. He held the US title for around a year before dropping it to Matt Riddle at Elimination Chamber 2021. On the same night, Drew McIntyre defended his WWE Championship in a brutal Elimination Chamber match. After the match, Lashley attacked McIntyre and left him laying, allowing The Miz to cash in his Money in the Bank contract, as we mentioned earlier. Although fans were not present for this big title change as it happened in the Thunderdome, everyone was excited for it. It moved the needle online, and it felt like a truly legitimizing moment for Lashley. However, what happened next just is unthinkable. WWE broke up the Hurt Business faction for no clear reason. While MVP stayed with Lashley, Shelton and Cedric went their separate ways. The group that made him popular and revived his career to some degree were no more. At first, it didn't seem to hurt the Almighty all that much. He went on a successful run defending the championship against Drew McIntyre, WrestleMania 36, with a shocking win where a lot of people thought Drew was going to leave the title. Lashley left Florida with the title. Lashley continued to reign on, defeating Braun Strowman, Kofi Kingston, and Keith Lee while still being the WWE Champion. He also had an interesting feud with Goldberg. Yes, fans were missing the Hurt Business and wanted them to reunite, but for some reason, it never really happened. Lashley spent after a strong title defense against Randy Orton and had to go on an empty battery against a Money in the Bank cash-in at the hands of Big E. Big E overwhelmed Lashley to take the title off him becoming the WWE Champion. That was in the fall of 2021, but Lashley would be back in the title hunt by the time we got to Royal Rumble in January of 2022. A much anticipated match, one that people had wanted for a long, long time on a massive stage. Lashley versus Lesnar. Two guys that were cut from the same type of cloth to become legitimate wrestlers who became pro wrestling entertainment superstars. But the match was more or less an angle than it was a dream match. Yeah, disappointing as it was, as it would just set up things later on the night, the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, made a surprise appearance and cost Lesnar the match, setting up a match between Lesnar and Reigns later on. Lashley just played a supporting role in the whole thing, but you know what he did do? He won the match and became WWE Champion once again. He wasn't the focus, but he was the champion. Lashley continued to serve a supporting role even though he was the champion, losing the title back to Lesnar at the Elimination Chamber due to suffering a kayfabe concussion during the match. After returning, he started a feud with the gigantic Omos, beating him at WrestleMania 38 in Texas. An impressive match, but unfortunately, even with the uh, big man versus big man selling point, it didn't have a lasting place. However, on Raw, after WrestleMania 38, MVP turned on Lashley and aligned with Omos. Everything that made Lashley cool was not really there. There was no Hurt Business, there was no MVP. 
Lashley was all alone, still legitimate, but alone. You could argue that he did not need them as a group to become the superstar that he has become. Lashley went on solo again, winning the United States Championship once more before losing it to Seth Rollins. This was done to reignite his feud once more with Lesnar. He eliminated the Beast Incarnate at the Royal Rumble 2023 and defeated him via disqualification, not clean, after Lesnar performed a low blow on him. Yes, another unfortunate match between Lesnar and Lashley that didn't meet those perceived dream match standards fans gave it before the bell ever rang. Fans wanted to see the big blow-off match between them at WrestleMania, but it never happened. Lesnar went against Omos at WrestleMania 39 in LA, while Bray Wyatt started targeting Lashley. Bray had made a big return to WWE and was using all of his spooky magic to counteract Lashley's legitimacy. A match between Lashley and Bray was supposedly set for WrestleMania 39 in LA, but Bray pulled away due to suffering an undisclosed illness at the time. Time, leaving Lashley with no opponents on the grandest stage of them all. Later, he started recruiting the Street Profits, cheering them on during their matches. Soon, B-Fab would also join the group, forming what was known as the Pride. This could have worked if WWE booked them as a stronger force, much like the Hurt Business, but their appearances and presentation were inconsistent on WWE television. They were really never seen as a threat beyond a certain level on the WWE radar. They started feuding with Karrion Cross and his final testament group, beating them in a very fun match at WrestleMania 40. On April 12, 2024, Lashley faced LA Knight and Santos Escobar in a match where he would lose. This was the final televised match of Bobby Lashley in WWE so far at the time of this recording. According to reports, Lashley might be leaving WWE, but it's not 100% confirmed. If that indeed does happen, it would be a big blow to WWE, as Lashley is truly a significant name who's always had a level of credibility attached to everything he does. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's Lashley. You know you're going to get something special. While he has accomplished so much in his career, it feels like he still hasn't reached his peak. Despite being 48 years old, he is in this condition. He looks that good and doesn't seem to be slowing down at any point. He can easily wrestle for several more years in this level of competition. We feel there is one more big run left in Big Bobby Lashley. Also, WWE never booked that big blow-off match between him and Lesnar. What are your thoughts on Bobby Lashley's career? Should he stay with WWE or explore other opportunities with other wrestling companies? TNA Wrestling? Maybe Lashley goes all elite? Let us know in the comments below.